Hello and welcome to episode two of Collection Close-Up, where we take a further look into our collection and a, take a close look into uh, particular objects in this collection in a way that is a little, in a little bit more detail than uh, what you would see in a normal tour. Let me introduce you to King Ibrahim and Joyo. Now, King and Joyo was a, uh, was a ruler uh, over the Bamun people. Now, the Bamun people in Central Africa are from the, what's now the modern state of Cameroon. In fact, uh, the, uh, the center of the Bamun world is the city of Funban in the southwestern corner of, uh, of uh, Cameroon. And uh, the type of landscape that uh, was uh, that was and still is present in that region are the rolling grasslands of uh, Nigeria and Cameroon, uh, filled with horse riding people, and uh, that uh, that shifts from the Bamun to the Hausa. And uh, in fact, this is why uh, this this is why you see uh, this uh, this Hausa turban on someone who is not a Hausa person himself. What you see is this adoption of Hausa uh, dressing uh, tradition. Now, if we take a look at this uh, statue uh, from the outset, uh, we notice a man who is uh, riding on a horse that's rearing up uh, aggressively. Uh, he's carrying a spear. Uh, this is, uh, we're looking at somebody who looks incredibly powerful in a very martial way. Uh, and, you know, and by looking at this work of art, we might assume that he was a warrior and that he achieved uh, his, uh, his goals through, uh, through battles, through uh, all, sorts of, uh, all sorts of daring do and, uh, and things like that. And uh, he, was, he was a daring man. Uh, but not in perhaps the way that is evident in this uh, work of art. Uh, what we see here is a warrior, but uh, what we see in actual history is a diplomat. Somebody who was willing to work uh, with other uh, kingdoms in order to meet his ends. And uh, his, his ultimate goal that he wanted to achieve during his, uh, during his reign which lasted from roughly about 1860 uh, to 1933. What he wanted to do as his ultimate goal was to maintain his kingdom's autonomy. And he did so by forming treaties with various kingdoms, uh, both within uh, the uh, Cameroon grasslands and also with foreign entities such as the German Empire. He was more of a diplomat. In fact, he was someone who, uh, who had very clear goals and he used diplomacy in order to uh, solve these uh, and to achieve these, uh, these goals. Uh, and uh, so what we're looking at is, is somebody who is filling a position that has a reputation for martial prowess, such as you know this this uh, this image of a king, uh, where he is uh, where he is shown uh, being very aggressive. But uh, in fact, what he's uh, what he's supposed to be doing is achieving the goals of the kingdom, which is the maintenance of the kingdom's autonomy in light of uh, of rising the rising tide of European colonialism on the African continent. Now. How, this, uh, how he would do this was uh, through a series of gift-giving sessions uh, between the German Empire and himself. And uh, one of the gifts that he would give uh, would be the throne of his father, King Nsangu. And uh, now, this, uh, this gift may seem a little bit over the top. I mean, after all, if you go to the German side and they're, what they do with thrones, I mean, they still have uh, the throne of uh, King Charlemagne 
Enoche. Uh, so, you know, this notion of holding on to things forever is, is something that would be uh, the norm in German society. But in Bamun society, there is a little bit of a different uh, relationship between kings and their thrones. Uh, it is, according to uh, Bamun tradition, uh, normal. Uh, somehow uh, either uh, give away the throne or leave it uh, to, uh, to decay. Uh, and so, so this notion of holding on to a throne from generation to generation to generation um, was one that was actually quite unusual in, uh, in uh, Bamun culture. Now, one thing that has to be said is that the throne that was, uh, that was given to the Germans was actually, uh, was actually copied uh, by King Enjoya and uh, was, uh, and was uh, used throughout his reign until 1933. And uh, so, but what we have throughout, uh, throughout this, uh, this king's reign is a tradition of gift giving and generosity in order to maintain the, uh, the autonomy of the kingdom. Thank you for joining us for Collection Close-Ups and uh, please join us again for episode three in our series.